And so it seems that, that we people of faith, we Christians, quite naturally traffic in answers and questions about meaning, about purpose. Don't know the meaning of life? Well, come to us. We've got answers. We can help. We even set it down in a nice, neat answer in a catechism over 350 years ago. What is the chief end? That is to say, what is the chief purpose of man? And the answer in the catechism, man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. And a lot of traditional religious folks, and I'm talking about the folks that are stalwarts in, in congregations, they sometimes scratch their heads about all the people that are out there in the world who are struggling to find meaning and purpose, but who don't come to the church, who don't want to come and hear what we have to offer. Now, as a church, as, as Christians, we do belong to a group that traffics in answers to questions about meaning and purpose. But as a church, we also belong to a group, the group, that gave Jesus the most trouble. Religious folks were the people that had the hardest time understanding Jesus, and they couldn't quite figure out, people of his day, couldn't quite figure out how to fit Jesus into the framework of what they already knew, of the meanings and purposes that they already had figured out. And that's what's going on in our, in our reading with Nicodemus today. Uh, Nicodemus is no bad guy in a black hat, despite the fact that some Christians want to view Pharisees that way. Nicodemus has seen what Jesus is doing and concludes that, well, obviously, this is a teacher who has come from God. He has, as a religious leader, seen the signs that Jesus is doing and knows no one could accomplish this without the presence of God with him. But the moment Jesus begins to speak, poor Nicodemus is bewildered. Jesus says that for all Nicodemus knows, he cannot see the kingdom of God that is right in front of him if he is not born from above, or as Nick hears it, born again. Now there's a word play going on here that simply cannot be reproduced in English. Jesus speaks a word that has two quite different meanings. One of them is literal, and one of them is symbolic, figurative. Nicodemus grabs for the literal meaning, and so he can't really make sense of what Jesus says. What would be born again, being born again, have to do with seeing the kingdom? But Jesus is, of course, speaking of something totally different. Jesus is talking about being born from above which is another way of saying being totally reoriented to see and to know things from God's way rather than from the ways of the world. And it doesn't come from learning the right things, from getting all the religious facts memorized, from knowing all those religious answers. It cannot be acquired. It can only come to you in the manner of the wind that blows where it chooses. And here's where I think that both Baptists and Presbyterians are prone to miss what Jesus is talking about. What he means when he speaks with Nicodemus, a religious leader befuddled by the darkness of what he already knows. Would Baptists associate being born again with that specific moment, that personal decision, which was accompanied by an earth-shattering, dam-breaking epiphany as they committed themselves to Jesus? I'm not sure how much room they leave for the unpredictable nature of the wind-like spirit. They have a formula that they know, and they insist that the faith adhere to that formula. 
Now, long-time Presbyterians, by contrast, speak or tend to speak of faith being acquired by layer, applied layer on layer over long years, acquired in something of the manner that a child learns to speak. And we can no longer, uh, no more name the, the specific moment that we were born again than I can tell you the specific moment that I learned to talk. Yet, when we think in faith in these terms as this gradual acquiring of practices and habits and knowledge, I'm not sure that we leave a whole lot of room for the unpredictable when like spirit either. Our formula is different, is perhaps more nuanced and more complex than a Baptist formula, but it's a formula nonetheless, one that we know and that we cling to. Now on this Sunday, the Sunday after Pentecost, we celebrate one of our formulas, one of our doctrines. This is Trinity Sunday. Trinity, as I told the children, as in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And a lot of us don't know quite what to do with this formula, with its crazy one plus one plus one equals one. The Unitarians thought they could solve a lot of problems simply by getting rid of it. And it has led to some really bad analogies over the years devised to make it more understandable, as in, my children know me as dad, my wife knows me as her husband, some of you know me as your pastor. Dad, husband, pastor, voila, a trinity. <laughs> but, but such formulas seek to reduce the trinity, to reduce God, to something that is understandable, that we can learn and know. But at some level, the Trinity, God, is indecipherable and unknowable. God is love. God is relationship. And experiencing this love that comes seeking us in Jesus requires more than information and formulas. It requires more than knowledge. It requires the wind of the Spirit blowing through our lives, a Spirit that we can neither manage nor control. You know, I don't think that the troubles Jesus had with religious folks are confined to first century Palestine. Traditional religious folks like me often want to keep the windows of the church and the windows of my life bolted down tight. Tight so that the wind cannot blow through and strew about all the certainties and things that I already know all around. But Jesus says that we cannot be part of the new thing He is doing if we are not reborn if we are not reoriented by wind and by spirit, by water and by spirit, by the wind that blows where it chooses. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. I wonder what might happen pop open the windows just a little bit. All praise and glory to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit who desires to blow into our lives. Thanks be to God.